While watching an old school RuneScape stream, I noticed a discussion among chatters and JMods regarding tick manipulation, which appears to be viewed positively by some. However, I respectfully disagree with this perspective. I do believe that putting in significant effort should be rewarded with the best experience rates. However, it is crucial that the rewarded activity aligns with the actual skill being trained. A prime example of well-executed game design is seen in the Hollow Sepulchre minigame, where players are engaged in challenging gameplay that directly enhances their training and skill. It is essential not to incorporate tick manipulation as a factor when designing a skill. Such a mechanic does not adhere to the intended functionality of the skill. If a high-effort, high-reward gameplay mechanic is designed, it should be an intrinsic part of the skill itself. Designing a skill with the mindset of limiting experience rates to 75% due to the assumption that players will resort to tick manipulation would be an example of poor game design. Instead, focus on creating gameplay elements within the skill that naturally support and encourage high effort, high reward gameplay. In my opinion, it is not necessary for game developers to specifically design with the intention of accommodating and discouraging certain techniques. Instead, they should focus on natural development of the game and allow the player base to explore and discover various methods upon its release. Some of the most remarkable discoveries and strategies in the game today have emerged unintentionally, but have been embraced because they are considered fair. A prime example of this is the ability to solo ohm, which exemplifies the essence of emerging gameplay at its finest. This unexpected approach to tackling challenges within the game adds an element of excitement and unpredictability. By providing the space for players to experiment and uncover new possibilities, game developers can foster a sense of creativity and empowerment among the player base. This approach not only enhances the overall gaming experience, but also encourages the emergence of innovative and unique gameplay styles. There is no denying that the quality of content like Theater of Blood, Inferno, Chambers of Zarek, Hollow Sepulchre are a completely different level compared to the Volcanic Mine, Temporos, and Guardians of the Rift. The former set of activities is significantly more interactive, engaging, and enjoyable, largely due to the presence of unattended mechanics and emerging gameplay. Sepulchre stands out as an excellent example that combines the best of both worlds. Its initial design is truly remarkable, providing an outstanding gameplay experience. However, it is players who have managed to uncover methods and techniques that consistently push the boundaries beyond what Jagex initially envisioned adding an extra layer of depth and mastery to the content. This dynamic blend of intentional design and player-driven discovery showcases the immense potential for emergent gameplay. These unforeseen strategies and mechanics contribute to the complexity and longevity of the content, enhancing the overall satisfaction and sense of achievement for those who engage with it. In summary, the unparalleled quality and enjoyment found in activities like the Inferno or Cox and Sepulchre are a testament to the significant impact of unattended mechanics and emergent gameplay, creating a gaming experience that surpasses what was originally envisioned by the developers. There is no logical reason to actively prevent players from discovering unintentional training methods. These methods do not negatively impact other players' gameplay experiences. While I personally engage in tick manipulation only occasionally, it serves as a means to quickly progress to a specific level or skill for a short period of time. This allows me to move on and to engage in enjoyable activities. By embracing unorthodox training approaches, game developers can offer players a wider range of options to tailor to their gameplay experience according to their preferences. Allowing for different play styles and strategies add depth and variety to the game, accommodating the diverse interests and goals of the player base. Furthermore, it is important to note that the unconventional methods do not infringe upon the experiences of other players. Each individual has the freedom to choose their preferred training style without negatively impacting or hindering others' gameplay. In summary, discouraging players from finding unorthodox training methods lacks justification, as it neither harms other players nor detracts from the overall gameplay experience. 
Embracing diverse play styles and strategies enrich the game, empowering players to personalize their journey and pursue activities that capture their interest. Thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe, and you'll have a better life.